here are some additional practice problems uh, in drawing Newman projections. So let's say we have a question here uh, and we're asked to draw a Newman projection of this molecule drawn from the, as viewed from the indicated direction. And so this, this um, right here is considered our eyeball and we're going to sight down this arrow. So remember that a Newman projection involves drawing a front carbon with its three different groups and then drawing the rear carbon with its three different groups. If we envision ourselves looking down that arrow, there's a top of the arrow, and there's the bottom of the arrow, and we're going to have some groups on the top of the arrow or on the bottom of the arrow, and so our first carbon here has a ethyl group on the top, and you can draw the two carbon chain, you can write ET, whatever you want, and then we know that each, car th each carbon is going to have three groups arranged around it, uh, more or less equally around the circle. Um, the hydrogen here is not drawn in the original drawing, but we can put it in right there. Uh, that is going back into the page, and if we're looking again along this arrow, that hydrogen will be on our left side, so I'll put it down into the left right here. And then we have the isopropyl group, which I'll put like that. Those are the three groups on the front carbon. Now we draw the back carbon. Again, looking along the arrow, on the bottom of the arrow is this uh, methyl group. And so that's going to just get straight down above the arrow and in this case on the dashed line is the t-butyl group. And then the hydrogen that's not drawn in the first drawing gets put right there. So we're always going to draw hydrogens on our Newman projection if uh, they are attached to the carbons of interest. Uh, and, so, and then so the question might then ask us to then proceed to show the highest and lowest energy conformers. And so in order to establish or, or decide what the highest and lowest energy conformers are, we need to um, understand what the largest groups are on each of these carbons. So on the front carbon, we've got the ethyl group isopropyl and the hydrogen, I'm not going to bother to identify that. That's obviously not going to be uh, the largest group. The isopropyl is the largest group on the uh, the front carbon. That's the most branching nearest to the carbon, nearest to this dot here. So the isopropyl is the largest group on the front carbon. And on the back carbon, we have the methyl. We've got T-butyl. And we've got the hydrogen. Again, I'm not going to draw the hydrogen. T-butyl will almost always be the largest group uh, whenever we have a choice. And we, when we see T-butyl, it will almost always be the largest group. So there's our, our two large groups. One's on the back carbon, up and to the left. One's on the front carbon, down and to the right. And so in this case, we have the two largest groups. They are already 180 degrees from each other. So this is the lowest energy conformer. That's how we arrive at the lowest energy conformer. The largest groups are as far apart as possible. And thus, it's easy to get to the highest energy conformer. If we rotate the front carbon 180 degrees, we're going to end up with the highest energy conformer, where the largest groups are as close as possible to each other. OK, how do we uh, establish the highest energy conformer? Well, in this case, let's keep the front carbon the same. It doesn't really matter which carbon we choose. I'm just going to do the front carbon right now. So there's my front carbon. Again, here's the dot, and then I have the circle. And so if I rotate the T-butyl group 180 degrees, um, it's going to be eclipsed behind the isopropyl group. And this is going to be a little trickier to draw. And of course, we're not going to draw it directly behind the isopropyl group because we can't, uh, we can't draw it then. So I'm going to use TBU to identify T-butyl. And then I'm going to make another little mark next to each of the other substituents, implying that they are eclipsed. And everything else, so this hydrogen now has to rotate all the way around, and it's going to be eclipsed by the first, the hydrogen on the front carbon. And then the methyl group here is going to rotate all the way around, and it's going to be eclipsed by the ethyl group. So I'm just going to leave that line as the end of a line. We know that to be methyl. So this is the highest energy. 
And that's because the largest groups, misspelled groups, are eclipsed. And that means they are as close as possible. And if you make a model of the original structure, if you rewind the video, you can look at it without all this colorful clutter around it. If you make a model of that, uh, and you rotate it so that A, first it matches the, uh, the first drawing, you'll see that the large groups outlined in red here are as far apart as they can be. And then if you rotate around the middle carbon-carbon bond, you'll come to find that the largest groups will become as close as they can get to each other. Now they're not touching, they're never going to be touching, uh, but they can be closer in space and thus uh, having more steric interaction and raising the energy of uh, our our um, of our alkane. So that's how we take an original drawing, generally it's a skeletal line structure, and turn it into a Newman projection, and then evaluate that Newman projection for both the highest and lowest energy conformers. In this case, we were lucky that the first drawing was indeed the uh, the lowest energy conformer. Sometimes we'll have to modify the first drawing slightly in order to get to the lowest energy conformer. And then, of course, it's oftentimes just a simple 180 degree rotation uh, to arrive at the highest energy conformer. Here's another example of uh, drawing a Newman projection. So let's say we were asked to uh, look at the molecule from this direction. Uh, again, we're going to understand there's a top and a bottom to the arrow. We're going to draw the first carbon like this. The top of the first carbon has the ethyl in the plane of the page or as in the vertical line as we discussed in class. And then down and to the right is the OH on the wedge and the invisible hydrogen. On the back carbon, we also have a group on top. This isopropyl is on top of the arrow. It is in the plane of the page, and so we want to draw it as though it were eclipsed. So I'm going to use that technique there. And then the OH uh, is also down and to the right, and it's going to be drawn as though it were eclipsed. And same with the hydrogen here. And so, again, even if you're not asked for the highest and lowest energy conformer, it's still a good idea to get in the habit of making sure you understand which is which and how we find that. And so, again, just like on the previous example, the largest groups need to be either furthest apart or closest together in order to come up with the highest and the lowest conformer. So the large groups in this case are the isopropyl on the back carbon and the ethyl on the front carbon. And I think you've already seen here that we have the highest energy. And that's because the two large groups are eclipsing. And so if we wanted to change this to the lowest energy, same technique we did previously, let's rotate 180 degrees, and let's use a new color now. Um, I'm going to keep the front carbon the same. I'm going to rotate 180 degrees, so now the isopropyl, instead of being straight up, is straight down. And you'll see that it's as far apart as we can get it from the ethyl. And then the hydrogen back here, instead of being down and to the left, it's up and to the right. And the OH, instead of down and to the right, it is up and to the left. And so this is the lowest energy conformer. And again, we have the two large groups 180 degrees removed from each other. So that's how we would draw the lowest energy conformer in this case.